Well, today I want to talk to you about um, Prairies on Fire. And really what I want to do is introduce to you a new um, prairie management technique that actually involves fire and grazing. And, this, and really this idea came about about 10 years ago from some folks at, the, at Oklahoma State University. And I was fortunate enough to talk to these people and, and borrow some of these ideas. And I wrote a grant and got funded and started a project here at, at South Dakota State. And, and what I want to try to do is, is to kind of give you that 50,000 foot view of why this is important in terms of prairie management. And, and what I want to really do is kind of take you back on a historical um, journey to kind of tie back uh, what was happening thousands and thousands of years ago and try to bring that to what we're doing today. And, and really what we're trying to do is bring back these ecological processes that have helped shape the prairie. So in order to do that, I need to take you back, back into the 1800s. For, you, for those of you in the audience that are from Brookings and have attended a movie, uh, you'll recognize as you're waiting for that movie to start that you'll often see pictures of Brookings and of Volga and Bruce and of the SDSU campus. And what's noticeable about those pictures is what's absent. And what was absent were trees. And so if you look at this house, when the first settlers came to the prairies, there weren't any trees to build their houses, so they had to use the sod, and so we see these sod houses. And so what really is that, that gives a testament to the fact that how important fire was on the landscape and shaping these Great Plains for, for literally hundreds of thousands of years. And what I want to talk about is how the Native Americans used fire to attract um, bison to these new areas where they, they had burned off the old vegetation and allowed the lush grasses and that regrowth. And typically they would burn in time periods in, in October or in April when the grass was, was dry and provided that getting rid of that old material. And right before in the springtime when that grass would start growing new, then bison and other wild animals would be attracted to those areas. And that really helped their success in terms of hunting. And so we had these, these two processes that were working in harmony with each other of fires that would come across the landscape and then also with the grazing animal. But when the settlers came in, in, the, in the 1800s, and especially after the Civil War, they came in numerous and we laid the groundwork with, with the railroad, people came out here and they were deathly af afraid of fire. And so we did everything in our, in our, in our resources to try to eliminate fire um, because of the destructive nature that it had. The other thing that we did is that we also eliminated the bison. And there was, there's numerous reasons which I won't go into, but one of the things is that it did is, is that it made way for livestock that would come out of the, the Texas area and up into the Great Plains for grazing during the summertime. And so with those consequences and losing the bison, we've now decoupled these two processes. We, we've, we have fire on the landscape still, but we don't have those, the large grazers. And then when we did bring um, the invention of barbed wire after the Civil War and brought our livestock out into the, the Great Plains and started to settle these areas, we carved up nice small pastures, put our livestock on there, and grazed them down real heavily without any movement whatsoever. And so we started, we started um, hurting the diversity of these native systems. And to further that, we started um, farming up this great vast plains and literally was the breadbasket of the world. And so we've got lots of things that are really um, working in concert with each other to destroy the, the prairies. And one last player that came onto the scene probably in the, in the 1900s and especially after the, the dirty 30s when we wanted to bring in some new species um, from, from different places to help stabilize the soil, we actually, they started to t take over and choke out the native vegetation. This is a picture uh, in Dual County, just a, a, a half an hour north of here, and you can see the Kentucky bluegrass that came from Eurasia is actually matted down and, and kind of choking out the native vegetation. And what's at stake is really the, nat the natural diversity of all these prairies. And I, sh I chose this picture because it's one of my favorites. This is prairie smoke, an aptly named for, for its existence on the prairie. It looks like fire. 
And, what, and what's at stake here is really losing the diversity of our prairies. So what we're trying to do is to bring back these two forces that have been acting on the prairie for over, over thousands and thousands of years. And because we have these invaders that come from uh, foreign countries that, that are really um, helping to, to knock back that, that native vegetation, we, impl- we use fire in a timely manner that we can suppress those introduced species and allow the native, native um, grasses and, and broadleaf plants to just flourish. And, and probably the, tur- the turning point to all this that's really making this new is to actually bring the livestock back into the equation, thus that it's, it represents what's been happening for thousands and thousands of years. And I love this picture because it shows something that we wouldn't normally think of doing. But here you can see these Angus cattle are very curious about the fire. This happens to be a backfire, so it's slowly backing into the wind and does not propose a, a real threat here. But what, what's going to happen to that blackened area is that it's going to rain, it's going to start greening up, and the cattle are going to be attracted to this area, just like the bison were thousands of years ago or even hundreds of years ago. And, and this is what we're really trying to do is bring back or recouple these two processes. And in the end result, with this type of, re, of research and this type of management that's going on here in the Great Plains, is to bring back this and protect the native diversity of this, of this ecosystem, not only in the, in the beautiful vegetation that we see, but also in, it, it scales up through all the different trophic levels that we see in insects and birds and, and what have you. So I wanna leave you with this, and I wanna challenge you, if you wanna learn more about how to protect our prairies, go ahead and Google patch burn grazing, and you'll see amazing research that's taken place. But I also wanna leave you with this thought. There really isn't anything new under the sun, and what we've been doing is simply borrowing from our ancestors that lived here for thousands of years and, t- and kind of re-bringing these two processes together to help save the prairies. Thank you.